Are you in the frame? We're all cheapers crime need. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. The favorite mama's here today. <laughs> She's having way too much fun already. Um, but we are gonna be talking about our Alaska vacation. We're both wearing our Alaska shirts. I'm pretty sure we planned this. A lot of you guys have been asking about like an honest review of how things were on sea and on land and vice versa and a lot of other details. So I'm gonna get into like some of the facts first and then we'll answer some of your questions and then maybe we'll answer some of your questions as we kind of go along with just discussing some of our you know, highlights, some of our lowlights of you know hits and misses. And uh, let's go from there. So we went from Minneapolis to Vancouver on Tuesday, June 19th. I have my planner here. If y'all wanna see my planner video, I'll link it up in a card for y'all. And then we actually got on our cruise on Wednesday, June 20th. And we did not come back from our cruise and back to Minneapolis until late Sunday, July 1st. It actually, we physically got here on the 2nd, but it was like a red eye flight. And we did a sea cruise first, and then we did a land cruise second. We chose Princess. The reason we went with Princess is, I think that she can answer that a little bit better, but my mom and aunt went to a local travel agency, and we looked at a couple of different cruise lines and mm -hmm. just decided that Princess seemed to fit our needs better. Uh, there was also a good recommendation from by the travel agent. Mm -hmm. She had um, been on their cruises before and said that they were really good. Basically it was either Holland or um, Princess is really the two that we were considering. Mm -hmm. So by really, I guess the luck of the draw, we chose Princess and yeah. I, it was a good choice. Well, we kind of looked over all the excursion options and things like that and it seemed like Princess was the way to go for what we wanted to do. I think the other crews had maybe just a little bit more like adventuring things like, you know, I don't know, like more zip liney and stuff that we didn't necessarily want to do, but I don't, I mean, they had that on ours too as yeah. excursions, but we just chose not to do those ones, so. We're, we weren't that adventurous. No. We just, <laughs> I went, let my mom and I We just went and saw a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know. But. Yes. So we did book through a travel agent, so I will not have any recommendations booking directly through Princess Cruise Lines, because we didn't do that, so we won't be able to tell you anything about that. Best recommendation, talk to your local cruise, or cruise director, mm -hmm. that's what I was gonna say, wow. I'm losing it. <laughs> talk, talk to your local um, travel agent and get their recommendations and they can you can talk to them about what you wanna do and what's important to you, whether you're booking a cruise to Alaska or any other cruise or any other princess cruise. And um, you know they can tell you what other people have said that they've booked cruises on or maybe something that they've experienced themselves. Booking directly through princess, I won't have any recommendations for y'all. Biggest question from people is what was your favorite part and what was your least favorite part about the cruise? We'll answer that and then we'll get into some other facts. I'll let you go first. Okay. You're, you're my guest on this channel. Oh. <laughs> it's her channel anyway, guys. <laughs> first of all, the trip to Alaska was on my bucket list and had been for a long time. So by just going on it was just like, you know, something extraordinary for me. But I, I will say, we were just talking earlier, and I think the most wonderful spot that I stopped and was just overwhelmed with the beauty was actually in Denali, not actually looking at Denali, but just in the park. Um, in that national park, it was just gorgeous. Yes, and we just stopped to take a scenic tour, got off, and there was a valley, and mountains, and mountains, and mountains, and clouds. And trees, and, and nature, and animals, and no, everything. No roads, mm -hmm. no electrical wires, no telephone communications anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was just so overwhelming and just awesome. I mean, you just look at it and you go, look what God has created. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is here for us. And that, I think, was probably the highlight of of my trip mm -hmm. that one spot i was just overwhelmed yeah with the beauty i mean and that was only like a morning excursion it was only till like yeah. one or two one, you know twelve thirty one. but it was very impactful like it was just like she said it was just very untouched i go back to the point of like all these people that live in not every single person that lives in alaska but it's like living in a postcard it's just very overwhelming to someone that 
doesn't live there that's like oh my gosh there's like mountains everywhere and there's so much nature and it's just like whoa off the grid and it's just so different than like Minneapolis St. Paul from what I'm used to and then you're used to Florida so it's mm -hmm. like living in this kind of lower 48 is very different than the life up there so it's just the matter of like oh my gosh I get to experience this too and it's it is an overwhelming experience but it's very good and it's very humbling in a way like it makes you feel really small but also like part of this bigger thing yeah. it's really really neat so I didn't think I mean I mean I walk outside and my like skin freaks out so I didn't think I would enjoy the nature part of it too much but I really did enjoy like that was probably my favorite day too and I thought that like by far I would like doing something else like you know excursioning in Juno or like you know I thought it would just like one of the excursions the most yeah. that was like probably my favorite like memory day of just like I can't see this at home you know, I can't see this in my backyard, mm -hmm. but it's just kind of amazing. So it wasn't the lumberjack show or, no, the, or like, the train ride or- No, I mean, those were cool, for gold those or... were fun, but- We had so many different things that we did. It we was did. Unbelievable. Yeah, but it's like, that was just so, like that's what you go to Alaska for. Like you want to have that experience of seeing that nature. And we saw a couple of animals. It was a little bit difficult on the day that we went. It was a little foggy that morning. Still, we didn't see as many animals as they had seen in the past but it didn't really matter like the animals were just kind of cool to see but you didn't need to see them it was just I don't know I feel like this is one re big like run-on sentence but it was just the nature was just overwhelmingly gorgeous but there were also so many animals that we did see not necessarily mm -hmm. all in Denali but in other locations yes. as well mm -hmm. and we saw eagles and fox yes and bear black bear not grizzly bear yeah. um thankfully <laughs> we saw doll sheep didn't someone see a little frog oh yeah. oh we saw a lot of moose caribou yes um i mean there was we saw the reindeer there were those sled dogs i mean that wasn't like nature but that was yeah. you know just like a, a little show thing but it was just like it was just so different you wouldn't come across any of those animals here yeah. i mean eagles maybe but but there were so many eagles. I mean, it was, yeah. they call them pigeons up there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there were so many of them. I yeah. mean, they were just like, there was flocks of them, mm -hmm. flocks. I remember we pulled in the Ketchikan. That was the first port that we went mm -hmm. to. I walked out on our little like terrace thing that was facing where we port. ported. Yeah. And it was like, there was like three or four of them just hanging out. I'm like, what the heck? And it was all day. It was like, you couldn't like get a shot of like a non scenery shot without one in there. <laughs> so yeah. It was just kind of nuts. I'm like, whoa, they're all over the place. And it, I mean, it's just very different for people that don't live there. It's just like everyone that lives there is like, oh yeah, yeah well, whatever, no big deal. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, there's a bear in town. Like whatever, it's fine. You know, like it's just like a no big deal. We're like, <gasps> <laughs> but just the fact that you saw it, yeah. you know, and sometimes you had to really look to right. try to see some of these things, mm -hmm. you know, and the buses would stop occasionally and go, oh, look up there, there's yeah. a den with a fox. And we, we probably were there for five minutes mm -hmm. waiting to find that den because um, they had some kits yes. um, in there as well. Mm -hmm. So it took quite a while to actually see them moving around mm -hmm. in the um, in the wild up there. But once yeah. you saw them, it's like, oh my God, look at that. Yeah. And it was just so cool. Mm -hmm. Just so cool to see that. You saw a fox and mm -hmm. her kits mm -hmm. in nature. Yeah. And where where would you see that? Yeah, I'm not gonna like see that in downtown Minneapolis. Like I'm just, like, it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna see it in like Florida. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody caught it on camera, you know, it's all no. just in our minds at this point. Right, but it was just, I don't know, just an interesting to see that like, because that was that whole day of being in the Denali National Park and just seeing everything so like authentically untouched yeah. by nature. And I think the tour guide was saying that they're still trying to build some roads, but they're trying to go about it in a way that it doesn't disturb any like nests or any like areas that certain animals have kind of taken over so that's becoming a little bit more difficult to kind of get in some of the other places you know they still provide a quality tour but it's very very small considering the vastness of denali national park yeah so it was just really really cool yeah so they are really considering the conservation of the animals mm -hmm. up there too as a part of their development of mm -hmm. the the um the roads to get the tourists in and out because once you get the tourists in and out that's that's where you get 
people appreciating that area. Mm -hmm. um, and the more they'd come, the more appreciated. Yep, exactly. So what was the worst, like your, not worst part, but maybe your, your low point of, <laughs> I know what mine is, but I don't know what hers is. It, it might be the same. Might oh be no! The same I don't think so because mine's very specifically me. So, oh, okay. so um, we had just a phenomenal cruise. Emily and I had never even been on a cruise mm -hmm. before, so no. you know it's like you hear about them from people, but you just don't know what it's really going to be mm -hmm. like. And it was just so positive. So many different things that were just so wonderful throughout that entire experience. Then we got off the boat and then all of a sudden we were <laughs> we were on the land and everything changed. The um, the cruise line was still part of it, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden we were paying for everything separately. Mm -hmm. um, and that was due to the way that we had booked the cruise. They did say on that train ride that Sometimes if you book through a travel agency, they didn't know to provide meal vouchers uh -huh. when you were on the land. That was something that was just an oversight with our travel agent, really had nothing to do with anything. But also we're seeing the on-land prices and it was like, what, Whoa. what? It was yeah. like $17 for like a cheeseburger. I mean, it was ridiculous. And that didn't include like anything. It was, it was like a bad cheeseburger too. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even good. We, I think our, the night that we, spent in um was it fairbanks mm -hmm. and yeah we, you were over it in fairbanks we, you we, were like I, I was ready to go yeah because we spent one full day in fairbanks it was already winding down like that was the last like day and a half two days anyways yeah but it was just like i, I think was, we were all over it I at was that pretty point much over but there was like nothing else to see i mean not to say we couldn't have seen fairbanks a little bit more but there was just like nothing else to do yeah you know it yeah. was just kind of like yeah. it was time to go we had been gone for two weeks I mean it was like it's time <laughs> we had a meal in our, our, our hotel that was um, just really the, the server was just so it was so bad horrible it was so bad I didn't even talk about it on the vlog at he all did not <laughs> he he was not busy at all he I mean, couldn't have cared there less. were he maybe had two tables yeah including ours mm -hmm. and he was so slow and didn't didn't really care and seemed very like put out that we would like ask for like a bottle of ketchup with our french fries like it was strange it was very strange and he was just so slow i'm like oh my gosh i think because we when we decided to, when we were all on land and paying for our own stuff we all just like paid for our own bills i think each of us might have given him a dollar like it was Maybe. that bad yeah it was that bad and the and food was so expensive too it was like oh my gosh and we're not those people no I mean, i'm like 20 percent minimum is like how i roll because like, i've been there you know you want to make sure that the servers are accommodated for for what they do for yeah. you yeah but this guy was it was blatantly bad so terrible yeah it was like oh yeah it was i was so happy to finally walk out of there <laughs> and it's like oh good at least i got something in my tummy but yeah Boy, oh boy, I sure am glad to walk out of this place. <laughs> like, I can get over bad food, but I can't get over bad service as well. So it was just a, like a double-edged sword. It's like, you know, clearly the server is not the one making the food. I understand that because I've been there before. But it's like, okay, well, if you're still providing good service and trying to be as accommodating as possible, that's great. But he was not accommodating nope. and the service was bad the food was eh. and it was very expensive it, yeah and i mean we all spent over twenty dollars on our like blts and burgers i mean we didn't get anything extravagant at all i mean it was mediocre to be the best mm -hmm. you know and then you're spending that kind of money and then a uh, poor service yeah, and it was just like, it didn't feel good to spend the money. Yeah. It was like, you handed them their debit card and you're like, oh, that feel like kind of hurt. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm so glad to be leaving here pretty quick. Yeah. So it like was a couple more hours and I'll be heading to the airport and I'd, for sure. I was ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. So my issue was our sleeping issue. Oh. And it was my issue because this one over here, <laughs> apparently she's getting a sleep study done soon. So that's exciting. Tomorrow night. Is <laughs> Woo! <laughs> By the time you guys see this, it'll already happen. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> anyway, 
but um yes i mean it was louder than that oh <laughs> let's be real so i mean i sleep with the sound machine i know a lot of you guys that watch the vlogs and <laughs> like just watch the vlogs in general hear, sorry. hear my crickets and stuff in the background sometimes but i have already issues sleeping and i've done the thing of being on sleeping pills and i don't want to do that anymore she snores so loud and then my aunt would chime in with her <laughs> snoring as well but like my aunt's snoring was like very much like monotone snoring where it didn't like go up and it didn't go down but hers was like Woo! and i was just like i can't i can't get into it because it would just keep keep waking me up and um so that was probably like my most ear because i was so tired every morning i woke up i was so tired because i was waking up when she <laughs> that one over here would have these like gasps for air or also have these fluc like huge fluctuations it would wake me up because it wasn't like part of what was going on in the background of the noise so it was so different that like my ears would be like wake up wake up so you know i was just like that's so basically about every half hour I was waking up and then I would try to go back to sleep and then I would wake up and then try to go back to sleep. You know, a lot of times in the mornings I'd be like, you two get the heck out of here. I need to sleep for like, a, like an hour uninterrupted. And even then I was still quite tired. So anyway, but I did, you know, take a couple of naps and stuff and that was fine. But yeah, and everyone's like, oh, we want to take naps too. I'm like, get out of here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just like we had to go take a nap too. play bingo and get out of the whole reason i need to take a nap is because of the two of you i'm like <laughs> and you guys don't need a nap you want a nap so <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna fall over and uh, thankfully we got the soda package because i drank a lot of soda just to stay awake <laughs> But that was probably like my low portion. Um, and just to talk about the rooms a little bit too, um, do you have the specifics on the room? Well, I believe we were in a state room. We were actually on the 14th floor. Mm -hmm. And we were on the Coral Princess. I don't remember if I said that before, no. but we were on the Coral Princess. So we actually had a balcony. Yes. Um, but there was a, um, uh, a deck. Mm -hmm. actually above us but on our on our deck you could actually see the floor above us so mm -hmm. it was, sometimes it was really a little tricky to try to yeah. take pictures if you were trying to do like a wider like, shot like a wider, wider landscape yeah. kind of a thing because the floor above us was actually um where the pool was as well as the dining halls and things yeah um so but it was down below there was those bigger massive decks that didn't have any restrictions like if you right. looked down so it was actually a walkway above, right above mm -hmm. our um, our balcony. Yeah. So you could hear people going down with carts or basically running, running <laughs> down the yeah down the hallway, you yeah. know, on their way to wherever they mm -hmm. were going. And there weren't a lot of kids on our trip. Something to like also note, which I was kind of. I was kind of expecting more children, but there weren't a lot of children. There was a lot of like generational groups. So there was like grandma and grandpa and then like mom and dad and like kids. Mm -hmm. But most of the kids, I mean, we maybe saw like three or four babies, like mm -hmm. infants and all the other kids were, you know, at least five and up. I mean, yeah. they all would like be able to remember the trip and enjoy yeah. it and all had an experience. There was some teenagers and stuff too. This was definitely not like a, like a rock out party kind of a cruise. It was more like educational and informative. Yes. Yeah. And um, even the things that they had to do on the cruise were more geared towards educating about Alaska or parts of Alaska or other experiences or you know kind of more mature things it wasn't really like for children but they had stuff for kids yeah but and it was educational for adults and kids too they did mm -hmm. have a a kids area on the yeah. ship itself i think they had like a kids club too yeah but they had educational things going on for the kids mm -hmm. there as well too yeah. to help them understand what was going on around them so mm -hmm. that they could appreciate the cruise um, as well. But it was just, it was more adult, but I think any Alaskan cruise is gonna be more adult anyways, cause we're all wanting to see the beauty and look at the animals and look at the scenery. And you know, it's like, you don't necessarily go back most of the time, mm -hmm. but it was really cool to see like those families of those big groups of people yeah. that came on the cruise together. And it's like, you know, it was like mom and dad and grandma and grandpa getting together. It's like, okay, we're doing this once and we're doing it right. Let's do it now. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, take the kids. They're of age where we can go and we can all have a great time. It's kind of like 
when you take the whole family to Disney. You know, it's like, okay, we're all doing it. Everyone's like the right age to get on the rides and have the good experience. Well, and, and it was good. So many passengers were from different countries and stuff yes. too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you had people from Japan and China mm -hmm. and Germany and um, of course Canada and the US, mm -hmm. uh, but also the Philippines and yep. I mean people from all over, all over and particularly the crew. Yeah, they were I, from all over. I think I think I only saw one crew member that was from the United States. Yes, I only met one and it was the gal at the jewelry store. Yep. Mm -hmm. And everybody else was from someplace else. Yep. The uh, captain was from Poland mm -hmm. um, and then many of the crew were from the Philippines, a lot from Japan and mm -hmm. China and yep. uh, Jamaica and you know Caribbean yeah. area, um, a lot from the Eastern Euro European countries. Yeah. I mean, they were from everywhere, all over mm -hmm. the world. All right, so speaking of the crew, I want to touch on, and I'm sure you do too, of the service that we got on the ship versus the service that we got on land. I mean, we kind of already talked about the service on land for, I mean, I think we both are in agreement of the service on the ship. I mean, it was like a different, it was, it was so un different. Unbelievable. It I was mean, amazing. It was just like you walked in and there were people to help you with anything. They all answered every question you had. They, like you're on this base, I mean, you're on this like floating village basically. And you know, we had the same server almost every night. Mm -hmm. um, and he was awesome. We had the same, our room person, I can't remember the, the stew or whatever he was called. I can't remember. I don't remember what he was called. Um, anyway, but it was the person that like serviced our room. He wasn't necessarily the person that cleaned it, but he was like the overseer of all of the rooms. But I mean, we basically talked to him every single day. And I'm sure he talked to everybody every single day, but he remembered what we needed added to our rooms every night and like different requests and stuff that everybody had. But it's like you develop these relationships with these people and they're just so incredibly kind and very generous with their time and energy, you know, explaining mm -hmm. stuff to us. Um, when we got our nails done, we actually got to chat with our the gals that were doing our nails and come to find out that most of the people are on contract for nine months. Mm -hmm. So they're on the same ship for nine months. Um, there are some that have shorter contracts depending on their job, but you know, even the, like the food service people and you know, the front desk people and like just maintenance. And mm -hmm. there's so many different people that we didn't even see too. Right. Um, but what was the ratio? Do you remember what the ratio was per passenger? Uh, there were 2000 passengers and about it's like uh, 900, eight or 900, um, crew yeah. members. So basically almost two to one. So every yeah. two passengers had, um, it, at least one mm -hmm. employee to help them out. Yeah. So basically, if you needed anything, they were there. They were right there. Yeah, and you didn't have to look far to find somebody that had a little logo on their shirt and that would help you out with something. So yeah, but that was awesome. Um, the only gripe I have about the physical ship, <laughs> I've got like two specific ones, <laughs> um, the outlets. Oh <laughs> my goodness. It was like, charging central and I was like the ringleader of charging everybody's <laughs> devices. There were two outlets right next to each other, just like this, the regular, you know, US outlets. They were so tight that you couldn't even fit another device in the second outlet. So the challenge became, it was like a really one outlet is really what it was. So that was really challenging. I don't know if they did that because they wanted to conserve energy since we were like on a ship or if that was just something that kind of predated some of the technology stuff that we have nowadays. Cause this ship was built in like the early 2000s, I want to say. It was built in 2002. Yeah, 2002. So it kind of predated that I a little bit. I have a fact bit. sheet right She's here. She's got all the facts. <laughs> Coral princess. And then in the bathroom, the bathrooms were very small, which is to be expected. I didn't know really what to expect. The showers were quite small. I didn't really have an issue in the shower. You did bang your, you know, elbow a little bit, but whatever. Like, yeah, you're not gonna fall. 
fall. Yeah, you ain't gonna fall unless you're going out there. Um, but in there, there was one outlet, but it was like this weird like razor outlet. It wasn't like a standard outlet, like a US outlet at all. So really that outlet was just not really existent. So, you know, someone that like maybe had a curling iron or something, you had to go to like where the desk was to get an outlet. That was it. And there was no outlets by the bed or anything like that. There mm -hmm. were lamps, but not lamps with outlets. Um, so when we got on land, it was like, oh my gosh, there's outlets. Yay! So it was like very exciting. So that was probably like my biggest like gripe with that. But it's like that, that's me like really picking on something. Um, but also I'd never been on a cruise, so I didn't know what to expect. So next time I go on a cruise, I'm bringing a power strip. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> like I ain't even joking. That's exactly what she even happen. suggested to the folks that ran the gift shop. I was like, dude, put these things yes. on your shelf, man. You could like sell them out. In, I know you could charge like no 30 bucks in. for them and people would buy them because it, it was bad. <laughs> It was because everyone kept losing juice to their phones or devices or whatever have to work with things And it was like even though we weren't didn't have service people were still using their phones for other things And it's like because we were all uh, taking pictures. Yeah, so it was a rotation constantly yes. about who's Whose device would be actually exactly hooked up so mm -hmm. that we could try to get juice back into it to make it You know work enough so that we could get back get back in business. Yeah, so that was, it was challenging, but it was okay. I'm gonna pull up some of your questions now, but I know that the question was like, you know, what's your best part, worst part, all that good stuff. But let's pull up the Instagram questions and see if there's anything. There might be some things that we already talked about. This person asked about money saving tips for the cruise ship slash stop offs. Um, <laughs> no. No. Um, <laughs> just have fun. Just have a good time. Bring your money with you. There just were a couple of, there was a couple that we met from, I think it was Australia that night at dinner and they had been on several cruises before and they said they went and had, it wasn't an Alaskan cruise. It was like somewhere else. I think it was in Germany or something. They had already, do you remember this conversation? No, maybe not. Okay. She's looking at me a little glazed over like, like what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but they were talking, they were talking about, they had like stopped off the cruise cause they had landed in their port and they wanted to do this thing and it was all sold out and they were super bummed about it and they didn't oh, yeah, book yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, she's, okay. I got it now. You know, she's getting older. <laughs> Forget. <laughs> She's forgetful. But anyway, they had like stopped off at this place and they were like all bummed out that they didn't get to do this one thing that they really were like passionate about that they wanted to do, but it was like a limited amount of seats and tickets. And they randomly ended up finding somebody else on the cruise that like rented a car and like they all went together and had this amazing time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the ports you can, like there's a little, most of them have like a little like visitor kiosk where you can i don't know book an excursion mm -hmm. but it's kind of hit or miss not it's not always manned i don't know if that's even more cost effective or less cost effective i don't know i wouldn't say wing it i'll just put it that way well we um we actually scheduled excursions through the cruise line yeah um again it was our first cruise you know we didn't we didn't know any better you know and mm -hmm. we'd rather go on the safe side and just schedule something yeah. and that way we know for sure that that cruise ship isn't going to take off without us too. right because they know there's they have, a bunch of other people with us. they have to wait until all of these excursions get back yeah. into port mm -hmm. um before they can take off because they do count noses going off and count mm -hmm. noses coming back on yeah. Um, and if somebody is missing, they will contact them mm -hmm. um, and say, you know, hey, I don't know exactly what they say to them, but um, yeah. you but, got this amount of time to get back on the ship. So. They will contact people. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with the um, emergency um, information that they gave to people too. You had to go through the emergency training mm -hmm. to learn yep. how to put your yeah the your uh, life vest flotation on. device and like yes. all that stuff. And that was the exact, first day we were there. Exactly where you're yep. supposed to go. And if people missed it, yep, they they tracked you down. Oh yeah, yeah, because you like couldn't be on the ship without getting your little card scanned in that you were at that like meeting that we taught. We right. you know had they had like the muster stations. They had to like explain everything to you because they didn't want. I mean, if something were to happen, there would be chaos anyway, but maybe there'd be like a little bit more organized chaos of like, at okay, least, well, at if least this you happens, to this go is where I'm going. Supposed to yeah, do. this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Excursion, sorry, you're not gonna save any money, I'm sorry. 
Just take a bunch of money with you and yeah, have a good time. You take your credit card, you know, <laughs> pay it off later. Um, oh, this one's a question for you. It says, uh, in your vlogs, you mentioned that this was your favorite mama's dream trip. Are there any locations on her bucket list? Oh. Well, um, actually, we've been kind of talking a little bit about uh, the family, and it's not particularly my bucket list, but we're trying to talk family into maybe doing a cruise down to Cuba. Yeah. Um, so if you're part of my family, 2020 cruise. We're thinking about it. Do it. We'd like it. <laughs> Talk, Save you know coins. who to talk to. The guy that gets sick all the time. Yeah, my dad. Yeah, he's the worst. That's the one. Talk to him. <laughs> Convince him that it's time. It's we time. should do that. Exactly. That is actually one of the other questions is if we are going to be planning on going on another cruise. We're thinking 2020. 2019 is too, too, soon. too soon for people. Um, people got stuff going on, kids, wedding, you know, like it's just life. It's too much. So, you know, I think 2020 is easier. So, maybe, but but there are some pla other places I'd mm -hmm. like to go. Um, do you have any like specific places on your bucket list? Actually, Niagara Falls. I mean, oh, as, that's very accessible. As like mundane oh. as it sounds, <laughs> uh, yes. That's extremely accessible. I have, you never, I have never been to Niagara Falls. <laughs> well, and I've always mean. wanted to go. Well, it's like, so I need to go. I could just go tomorrow. I I could. Hey Marlene, do you want to go with me tomorrow to Niagara Falls? My aunt is sitting in oh, my dining room right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We could do that if we wanted to. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't require a cruise boat. No. So. No. It would require a plane ticket. Well, I guess you could I could you just could drive. You could drive, yeah. I mean I, have I a guess. Car. <laughs> and it works. You're a big girl. You have a car. Next question is did you guys get seasick on the trip? I want to plan a trip like this with my mom, but that's making me a little bit nervous. Okay, so I think we all got a little bit motion sickness, but not in a pukey way. My mom actually got some medication from her physician before mm -hmm. we left. I took it every night. I don't know if you guys took it at all. I didn't take it at all. No. I got it because I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, I actually we had it. I didn't expect- There was like 60 pills or something Yeah, I didn't expect to get sick because mm -hmm. I'd never had an issue right. ever with motion sickness like that. But right. I said to my physician, you know, I'm going on this cruise and I've never been on before. I don't know what to expect. Yeah. Can I get something? So yeah. I got it, took it along with. I took Emily it the whole time. Um, but, but there were times yeah. where I was just kind of like- Like the bearings? Like, moving around yeah. trying to figure out where are my feet because right. my feet weren't under me and yeah. um mm -hmm. it took a little a little bit of yeah. maneuvering yeah. to figure out exactly where i was well but, and i actually captured this moment on one of the vlogs it was the first night we or the first yeah night we were there on the ship because we i think we like departed at like four or five o'clock or something mm -hmm. and we were like <gasps> yes sitting. I mean, yeah we were sitting and like watching like because there's like these big windows kind of just like watching the sea because mm -hmm. it was just this big open space it was like oh seven eight o'clock or something she was standing up i was i think standing up and my aunt was sitting in one of the chairs and all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh i'm like why are you so dramatic like what's your problem like what is the well, problem i just i mean it was just like the, the eyes I and the body were doing two different where things i was and what i was <laughs> it's like i had to hang on to something and all it was was glass and i had nothing to hang yeah. on to it's like oh my god but before, I mean, her feet were under her, but then it's like looking out and being like, oh my gosh, we're really cruising. Like we're going fast. I mean, it's just one of those like yeah. things. And then one day, I can't remember which day it was. Hold on, let me look. Juno, the day we were in Juno, that bus ride, we were in the bus a lot. We did a couple of things. We went to the Rainforest Garden, Mendenhall Glacier, and we went to the State Museum there. Mm -hmm. And we were in the bus a lot and it was like, get in, get out, get in, get out. And I, felt so ill just in like i i was just i felt drunk i was just like spinning um so i knew it was just this motion thing mm -hmm. it wasn't anything else it wasn't like i felt sick to my stomach but it was just like i can't get my bearings right but i think you had it a little bit when we actually got on land and we were yeah. like in anchorage and then we like went up and did all those things yeah. but it was like 
every day it would get a little bit better, mm -hmm. but it was like very jarring the first day. It was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, once you stepped on land, mm -hmm. it's after being on the ship and just kind of right. moving moving with the ship and yeah. what it does, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're on solid ground, it's like, whoa, whoa what happened? Something, yeah. yeah, there's something different here. Yeah. And it was the same kind of a thing, mm -hmm. and it, it, it took a few minutes to, yeah. to get your bearings again. For sure. For sure. So none of us really got seasick, but I would just recommend talking to your doctor or giving some of those like over the counter options. We didn't use any over the counter options, no. but you know, talking to your physician before and maybe getting some, you know, uh, motion sickness pills just to have them. Be sure to get them before you get on the ship because if you have to depend on yes. their gift shop um, or, or their like sick bay yeah, area or whatever, you know, it's going to cost you a lot more money. I, yeah. I can guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. So just, just, Get it taken care of ahead of time. Just take it with you. This person says, since I know you had issues with this, did you wish you had done a different sleeping situation? And then she writes, also the favorite mama videos are the best. Well, this is like clearly your channel. <laughs> um, yes, I wish that we, okay, here's, here's the two things I would have like really wanted to change. I wish my brother would have came with because he would have had an amazing time. Oh my God. And I wish that Phil and I would have gotten a room together and then you and Perky would have roomed together. Yeah. That yeah. would have been like we could have snored together all night. Oh line my gosh, that was like no problem. They at would all. have been like two peas in a pod, and my brother and I would have been like silent. So <laughs> yeah, my brother. I don't think my brother snores, but no, anyway, no. I I don't feel bad like hitting him in the middle of the night. I do feel bad like hitting my mother in the middle of the night. So I just she didn't, didn't hit me it. by the way. I did well, wake you up. She did once. push me one night. Yeah, I did. I was like, Shh. I really wanted to say some really colorful words at like three in the morning, but I decided to <laughs> just be like, can you roll over? And then you rolled over and then it was worse. And I was like, I'm not getting up again. Like I it was just so, I'm so sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I laugh, but I am. Really yeah, she laughs, but she's not. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, the way I would do a sleeping situation differently. So if, well, I shouldn't say if, when we do the 2021, I think that like Phil and I should get a room together and then like you and whoever, you know, like I think it should be like two people in a room because I feel like two people yes. is like perfect. Two people would be much better in a yeah. room. We had three people it in a room. It, it, it was tight, but it was fine. It was just, it was very yeah. tight. It was tight. Yeah. 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 And we thought it was going to work out okay. Mm -hmm. You know, again, not ever having been on a cruise before. Yeah. I mean, we just, uh, we didn't know how tight it was going to right. be. Um, I do regret um, yeah. that part of it. But, but, oh well. Oh well. We'll know for next time. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, this person says, any tips for budgeting a trip like this or researching cruise lines? I think the best advice would be to just talk to your local travel agent. Um, they have all the prices there for you, even the excursion prices. I remember going over that like a year and a half before we went of like, mm -hmm. okay, well this one's this amount of money and this one is this amount of money. I mean, you could spend thousands of dollars on one excursion. Yeah. I mean, there were some insane ones yep. and then there were ones that were like $60. Yeah. And then it, it just kind of, it, it depended on what you wanted to do. So it, there's no real sticker shock. There were, I think the only sticker shock that we had was when we actually got on land yep. and then things weren't taken care of um, because everything was paid for on the cruise, except for like my mom and I got the soda package and then we just add, had that added to mm -hmm. the bill. That was like the yep. only extra thing that we did on the cruise ship. I mean, I guess you guys did bingo a couple of times. I only did bingo once, but yep. it wasn't like, we didn't go crazy on stuff at all, yeah. but it, it was just that sticker shock was a little bit more, but I would say talk to your travel agent about if you're going to do the like sea cruise and a land cruise to see if that's an option. And for some cruise lines, it might not be an option to do that because it was really just vouchers for right. the um, place you were staying at. One, one tip on the excursions, um, our travel agent actually put in, put in requests for the excursions that we had requested. Mm -hmm. um, when we actually got on the ship, we actually went to the office where the excursions were being dispensed and um, come to find out that we didn't have anything out there at all. Yeah. So um, if I did find out later that if you actually schedule your cruise through the cruise line itself, mm -hmm. they will have that information available. Yep. But for some reason, um, our travel agent, it was just a request and never really went through. We yeah. still got all of the excursions yeah. that we wanted. But we went there the first, like right after it was, we disembarked. Yeah. So it was that day, if we would have waited, there were some some of our excursions did get sold out yes. on certain places. Yes, so did. definitely stop at the, you know, 
excursion office. It was like a little office area mm -hmm. and um, talk to them the first day. Just we just to make just sure to that you've got mm -hmm. reservations for the things that you want right. to do because you don't want to be disappointed when you get to a port and go, you oh, know, I really wanted to do that wow, and now I can't that do was it. What I, that's what I came here for yeah. and now you can't do it because exactly. it's all sold out. This person asks, is the land cruise worth it as an add-on? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Do it. Absolutely. If yeah. you can go for it, just do it. Was the cruise something you would do again or would you rather just fly to Alaska and travel? I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna leave I, this to her. You know, that <laughs> cruise was so awesome, you know, and there were so many things that we saw, but so many things that we didn't see mm -hmm. that I think you could go, I think we could go on exactly the same cruise yeah. and do something completely different mm -hmm. every single day. Oh yeah. Um, besides just the excursions themselves, there were so many um, activities that were available mm -hmm. on and we couldn't go to all of them on the cruise yeah in info uh, educational information just mm -hmm. um, some of the shows fun and times yeah. yeah activities I mean there were so many things you you could, there was no way that you could do everything yeah um, and I'm sure it would be different for every every single cruise but yeah. just so many different things I, I'm sure it would be totally different the mm -hmm. next time we would go yeah. if we would do exactly the same yeah. thing. So if you were to go to Alaska again, would you do another cruise or would you just fly to Alaska and travel around? I think I'd do another cruise. I think so too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the structure of the cruise that there are excursions, there's things to do, but then other things are taken care of for you mm -hmm. and you get to see more than if you were just to like fly into Anchorage or fly in like wherever you're gonna go and then have to be like kind of left to your own devices. Yeah. I do like the structure of the cruise adventures, if you will. I yeah. do like that. It's kind of a fail safe thing so that you mm -hmm. kind of pick ahead of time what you want to do and you just basically put your hands and you put your life in somebody else's hands and just yeah. say, take me, you, take me there. You just get you on know, the bus and you're like, up, Scotty, do you know, it. And there you are and you're yeah. moving around and doing something else and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're back. Yeah. And now what are we going to do? Like, and, oh, well, now we have lunch on the cruise ship and then we like, you know, cruise again at two o'clock. It's like, oh, we can sweet. walk around town and we yep. can have an ice cream cone. Yes. And, ooh, man. Oh, we man. had a few ice creams and it was very delicious. I think we didn't like stop talking about ice cream. <laughs> It was pretty darn good, I it gotta was. tell you that. So the next question is, what was the best thing you ate? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave it to her to talk about that. Dessert. <laughs> oh, there was a dining On the cruise, like here, hold, I need to interrupt for a second. All right. When you're on the cruise, wear stretchy and baggy clothing. Yes. It's gonna be very helpful because they will keep bringing you food until you say stop. And there's dessert at every single meal. If you want it, you don't have to get it. There's an appetizer at the sit down dinners. There's like a beautiful dinner every night in the dining rooms. But anyway, we'll, we'll stop. I will stop talking about that. But yeah, stretchy pants is amazing. You're going to gain like 10 pounds, but just like, don't worry about it. It doesn't count, right? You're like in another state. So <laughs> you just like, you just eat a bunch of salad when you get back. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so what was your favorite food? Well, you know, I, I that that dining room was just so wonderful. Mm -hmm. The and Santiago, that was our waiter guy. The, it was the, awesome. The dining room was so incredible. I mean, there was a different entrees every mm -hmm. single day. I mean, there were maybe about three or four things that were on the menu every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then there were about five or six things that were specific just to that for night, that and that day. was it. And they wouldn't, they weren't going to bring those ones back. So it was like, so if you a choose your own if adventure, you said like that, it's like, you better pick that right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But, but if you wanted, if you wanted say salmon and mm -hmm. you wanted the shrimp, you could order the salmon yeah. and the shrimp. Yeah. It's like, bring it all. So they would bring that. Yeah. Of course you'd have your salad mm -hmm. and then you'd have beautiful vegetables mm -hmm. along with it. Um, everything was fresh, delicious. Oh, I mean, I mean it, and it was so beautiful and so presented so wonderfully. Mm -hmm. It's just like you looked at it and you go, oh my gosh. I mean, it's like a work of art. Yeah. And those desserts were good. Oh <laughs> my Lord. They were so wonderful and so creative and so mm -hmm. beautiful that you couldn't, you couldn't pass them up. Yep. I only passed up the ones that had whipped cream on them because they were nasty. <laughs> but then... 
pass them, pass them my way. I know. Then I'll she would eat that. them, and then my aunt would eat I'll them take too. Care of them. Yeah, they were like, "Oh, there's whipped cream on that." No. Emily ain't gonna eat that one. I'm like, "Oh yeah, for sure." So your favorite food was like in the dining room. Yeah, that I, was your favorite. Yeah, I mean, um, salmon is my go-to. Um, it's her favorite. Yeah, it is. It is. But by the end, I was like. Salmoned out. Thought with the salmon, you know. Do you want to talk about the color of the salmon? Because you couldn't stop talking about that when we were on the cruise. Anyway, but there's a bunch of different kinds of salmon. But she was like freaking out about the color of the salmon every time she. It's so vibrant. I mean, it was so <laughs> pink. Yeah, so. It was like red. Technicolor. Pink. I mean, it was so fresh. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh my god, it was just. And it was delicious. So. I just, I mean, I just couldn't get over it. And because I'm a huge salmon eater anyway, mm -hmm. it was just totally, totally delicious. Yeah. But, and then they put these great sauces on there and it's just like, oh, I mean, it's just like you, they melted in your mouth. And um, I don't know. They were pretty good. But towards the end, I was just like, uh, maybe I'll have a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's the other thing too. At the very end, we were on land yes. and if you wanted to get salmon, it was like $28 minimum. Yeah. And a cheeseburger was 18, so it was like, oh, maybe I'll get that cheeseburger, or maybe yeah. I'll get that BLT. Yeah. Like, it was just like, oh, okay. I've already spent enough money on souvenirs to like support the state of Alaska. I think it's all right. I th yeah, <laughs> I got a lot of pins. Yes. And I got a bunch of t-shirts, this is one of them. Yeah, I got, I got this one too. Yeah. Um, so my favorite food that we had, I actually have it sitting, well, I don't have it sitting up here, but it was when we were in Juneau, it was right outside of where the cruise ships port. Um, it was this place called the Twisted Fish. And that's when I wasn't feeling great. Oh, and I so had good. clam chowder and it was so good. And I'm so mad because I got clam chowder and I was like, oh, I'm gonna get a cup of clam chowder. And it was like a legit like trough. Like it was so <laughs> big. And of course it's like thick and delicious and amazing. But then I ordered like a meal and then I wasn't feeling the meal. Like the meal was good, but I just wasn't feeling like the most amazing. So I had the soup and I'm like, oh, this is so good. It can't get any better. And it didn't. I mean, it was good, but that was probably my best food experience there. But I mean, I just love seafood anyway. So, you know. Well, and you know very well that that, that food came from right, that water that, that water we were looking right at. out there it's like you could see it and it's like there it there it is exactly because they had um this the salmon fisheries and the yep um the canning and they did yeah, all that kind of stuff they had everything right there mm -hmm. so you knew it just it it had just come in on the boat all right if the frame looks a little bit different i had to switch out the battery battery died on us so i think we've been chatting a little too long but that's all right Let's go to another question. See oh, if there's any more. Well, I don't know if there's any other questions that we haven't, like we kind of rambled on and talked about a bunch of things. So we kind of answered a lot of the questions. Well, wait a second. I want to oh. talk about another restaurant that we went to okay. that was just so, so oh. awesome. Um, Do you want the name of it? Yeah, it was called The Bake. Yep. And it was in, uh, it was right next to the Denali Princess Lodge. And it was just such an unusual, place. I mean, you looked at the restaurant and it was sort of like, like it was very <laughs> tilted. It's like in the vlogs. It's like, and, and you walked up the steps and they were sort of like, like this mm -hmm. kind of going up. And then you walked in and there were sort of like holes all over on the floor. Yeah. So you had to kind of be careful where and the floor was you like walked. not level. <laughs> if you put something on the floor, like a marble, it would have just like, <laughs> yeah, take it off. Um, <laughs> But it was just wonderful. It was really good. I mean, the ambiance in there was just so cool. Yeah. And it's again, like a total hole in the wall. It was really good. Great place to eat. Yeah. Um, great place to eat. Good service. Good food. Yeah. I you mean, know. it was just it, it same was, prices, but it was like at least we got something different. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But it was so so good. And mm -hmm. again, just very very different. But yeah. And the reason that it was all kind of kitty wonkus like that is because of all the permafrost underneath. Yeah. That it just kind of keeps moving around and so all the footings were just like, Whoop, you know. Yeah. So the restaurant just kind of goes, Whoop, you know. And <laughs> it's, so I hope they never really get uh, any inspectors in there to actually check the place because they probably would be condemned. <laughs> I think it's a little different yeah. <laughs> when you're dealing with Alaska but just because it was, of the... <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it was. It was like, 
is this right? Are we gonna like fall into the earth? How's this gonna work out? Yeah. I wanna talk a little bit real quick, cause we haven't really talked about it yet, of the lodges that we were at. Sorry, this video is gonna be kinda all over the place, but. You guys know me, so that's like kind of like normal, right? The cruise ship we were on, I already talked about, but that was the Coral Princess, built in 2002. And when we got on land, we first stayed at a place called Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge. So it was part of the Princess brand. Mm -hmm. And we stayed there for one night. Mm -hmm. And then the next night, we stayed at the Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge. And we were there for two mm -hmm. nights. And then we went to Fairbanks and the hotel we stayed at at Fairbanks, I can't remember the name of the hotel, but it was not a princess branded hotel. Um, they clearly had contracts with, with uh, Princess and Holland and there was a couple of other organizations and stuff yeah. that were there. It just didn't have the name princess on it. It was just a national brand. Um, yeah. It, it, was, it was a decent hotel. Yeah, yeah, that was a big huge room too, mm -hmm. um, which was kind of cool. I just wanted to like, but give you the timeline of where we were and what we did. So I think this should be the last question because this is our honest review of Princess Cruise Lines. Would you choose Princess again? In a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, they exceeded, I, I, I didn't really have many expectations, just hoping that I was gonna have a good time, mm -hmm. but they did everything and ever, anything that you needed them to do mm -hmm. to make the experience. Um, a good one. Yep. Uh, they did a wonderful job. Um, I absolutely would, would go again. Totally enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, the crew was Top unbelievable. Much. Yeah. Um, the food was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The accommodations, um, but that, but again, again, it's a, that it's was a our own choosing. Yep. The two, we could have gotten a, you know, we just didn't know. We didn't know. And that's okay. But it was, it was great. Mm -hmm. Um, and the places that we saw were just, um, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. As for me, yes and no, and I'll explain why. Um, yes to a cruise, the land cruise, I mean, and I know you and I have talked about that, was the service, just service, subpar for me. I mean, we got so spoiled on our actual like cruise oh, part of it. Yeah. I mean, it was just a whole nother world of service and everyone had an amazing personality and just was so kind and just kind of came from a place of yes. And you know, it was, and it wasn't like we were like asking for outlandish thing. It was, it was just more like informational stuff or mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, it was just, everyone had a smile on their face. Everyone was friendly and helpful. Um, even if you didn't need help, they would help you, you know? But once we got on land, service was fine. It just wasn't great anymore. So it was almost like we were just back in the lower 48 going yeah. to a hotel. That's why it felt weird because these other lodges had the princess name on it. So you thought, oh gosh, these are gonna be like the mm -hmm. same service and same yeah. everything. Everything was just fine. It wasn't bad, it wasn't good, but it was just fine. Yeah. So it was almost just like, I don't know, going to a regular hotel in Michigan or like, I'm not picking on Michigan, I'm just picking on the lower 48. It yeah. was just kind of just any, any city. It was United wherever, yeah. yeah. And it wasn't, nothing was bad, but nothing was outstanding like it was on the ship. So for me, the land cruise, if I were to do Alaska again, I would probably start the land first because my expectation level would be normal <laughs> because I'd be coming from Minnesota. So it's like, oh, that's just how all places are. And then I would get spoiled on the like actual, you know, sea yep. part of it. I, that's the thing that I think um, I would change, but I would choose Princess to go on like another, um, you know, cruise cruise again. It was a great time. I'm so glad that we went. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the three of us had a wonderful time together mm -hmm. and I'm glad we had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was a trip of a lifetime. Yeah, it really was. Probably not going back, yeah. but would love to. Princess Cruises, if you want to sponsor us, we're here. 2020, we want to go somewhere else. Here we are. We are here. <laughs> we're on the cruise. We are. We had a great time. Yes. But I will link my vlog series down below for you guys if you want to watch any of the vlogs. I believe it starts on day 19 is the day that we traveled into uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. And then after that, if you want to watch more, they will be down below. But anything else you would like to add? No. no? Let's go again. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're working on it.
<laughs> Maybe I better save up some nickels and dimes first. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll save to, your money, folks. We'll, have, you to ra we'll have to ration Doyle's bacon budget. <laughs> It is a little expensive, so, yes. you know, but yes. have a good time. So anyway, that is going to be it for our honest review of Princess Cruise Line to Alaska. If y'all have any questions, feel free to post them down below. Feel free to give my video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, you can thumbs it down too, but I don't recommend it. Um, but you can also <laughs> subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. And um, hopefully in 2020, we'll take you on another adventure. Could be fun. It could. All right, well, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think that's gonna be it for our honest review of, oh my God. <laughs> Shh. Shh. I just can't with you right now. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> gonna have to like get you a diaper. <laughs> what the hell is that all about? Oh, I thought that was Doyle coming down. That was not Doyle going down the stairs. That was Toots McGee over here. Cut that out. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're not. No, you're not. She's not sorry. It's like the story. She's not really. <laughs> you could have waited like three more minutes. You would have been off camera. <laughs> but you talk so much. You talk so much. Why do I? Oh, you have a lot of things to add as well. <laughs> oh gosh, all right. Let's chill out. <laughs> Start again. Oh goodness. All right. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> act like nothing just happened. <laughs> so anyway, I can't like close it out now. It's like all ruined. Okay. All right, so anyway, that is going to be it for our honest review of Princess Cruise Line. Well, stop. <laughs> You're such a dope. What are you doing? <laughs> You're gonna do that again <laughs> if you keep laughing. <laughs> You've got white pants on. You <laughs> need to think about this. <laughs> You're sitting on a light don't, bench. <laughs> don't look at my white pants. <laughs> That's why we shoot from the like belly button up. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. All right. Oh, I'll, you look, I'll look over this way. Will way. you not laugh? <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> do we I need look to, distracted. Do we need to get Doyle in the I'm break? looking distracted. Oh my god. <laughs> well, don't like look off. It's oh. gonna be weird. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. Center your chi and relax. Okay. Don't like relax too much, but just like adjust it up. <laughs> well, folks, it's time to kick it old school.